Well, here we are again. It's the end of the week, and time for another Cannon Fodder article. Guess that's kind of a hat trick for me, isn't it? Anyway, the focus this week is on a few of the exotic creatures encountered in the campaign and multiplayer maps of Halo 5. Short and sweet, as I often say. Although, as Grimm notes, next week will be another story. Along with marking the 50th issue of this blog series, it seems we can expect quite a bit of lore lane goodness. But for now, animals. We start out with what I've been calling Space Dragons, true name, Luminon. A type of sky ray, this species is said to be common on Builder Worlds, the rate having a strange infatuation with the species. Hailing from a planet known as Rotero, a planet that fell to the Flood, the Luminon have breeded unchecked for millennia on Genesis. Thankfully, they prefer to hunt over the surface of the planet's oceans and generally keep their distance from anything else. Next up are a funny little trilobite-like creature called Logrodites. Originally found in a moisture-dense asteroid cluster on the edge of Forerunner space, they are extremophiles by nature and will scavenge the surface of Genesis for harmful bacteria, helping maintain the planet's ecosystem. After that, we have the Kringodon, bird bat gliders native to Sunghelios. They primarily feed on scavenged carrion, aka dead meat, similar to vultures, and fist-sized dust mites from crevices in the stone cliffs of their native region. Next, we have a Sunghelios beetle known as Orzeal. They are primarily found near the western shores of the Kivro continent, near Sunion. We then have a space eel known as the Kothal. Native to the deep oceans of Beta Gabriel, they are rarely seen in shallow waters after their first year of life. Their primary prey are a three-meter species of crustacean that dwell in the labyrinthine caverns found in the depths of those oceans. Finally, we end with Spice Whales! Like the whales of Earth, they feed on krill-like organisms and breathe air. The species, properly known as palosaurs, are sightless and use echolocation to locate colony swarms of the aforementioned krill creatures. Interestingly, while found on Beta Gabriel, they have also been found on numerous other worlds, seemingly having been seeded there after the activation of the Halo Array. I'm sure that's also going to save time on creating new creatures for future Halo games. I'm not blaming them, I'm just saying. But that does it for the main article. Short and sweet, as I said. Next week is teased to be much more, however, and Grimm notes that there will be some giveaways, so be sure to keep an eye out for that. From there, we can move on to the new universe entries. This week we have the Arbiter's legendary Prophet's Bane, the Oni Winterclass Prowler Acrisius, and an update to the Kamchatka article. Starting us off, of course, is the Prophet's Bane. Once a legendary blade known as the End of Night, the Arbiter pulled it out of the vaults of Vodum Keep and had it reforged. The original blade was told in stories and song from the times before the Writ of Union. During the reforging process, a step unusual in its own right, the Arbiter insisted that components of the energy sword that took the life of the Prophet of Truth were incorporated into the new sword. A sword's name cannot be given by the owner, but it must be earned in time from fearful whispers and roaring shouts. And in time, the Arbiter's blade had earned the name Prophet's Bane, and may soon come to be known as the Covenant's End. Hunt them to the last! The day we extinguish the Covenant's light, Damn, that is some badass history, and a nice look at how Sangheili see their energy swords. We know there are some named swords in Halo 5, such as Ravening Silver or Vorpal Talon. I hope we eventually get to hear the stories behind these names. Next up is the Winterclass Oni Prowler Acrisius. Capable of holding 22 people in total, the ship was fitted with an experimental slip space drive and cloaking systems based on Covenant and Forerunner technologies. With these, it can easily be deployed across the galaxy to monitor ex-Covenant species and human insurgents. The one on Argent Moon was there for quick evacuation, should the need arise. The Acrisius is said to be similar in form and function to the old Black Cat class Subprowlers, a ship generally meant for exfiltration, such as during Operation Torpedo in 2545. Finally, we have Kamchatka again. The update is concerning the March on Stormbreak scenario from Warzone. The map is set on the broken spine of the Stormbreak Mountains, once mended by the Forerunners in the distant past. Following Kamchatka's discovery, the UNSC put into motion plans to establish a base for controlling and studying the planet's Forerunner sites. And that's all for today, though I certainly look forward to what Grimm has next week. Until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.